Today, I've got five brand new Christmas decor ideas that I hope you will love. Hi there, my name is Sandra, and you're watching The Schwoben's Nest. I'd like to shout out a great big thank you to all of my current and new subscribers. I wouldn't be where I am on my channel without you. If you are new to my channel, I'd love it if you could hit that red button too. This is a sign that I created last year for Christmas. It didn't sell, so I'm going to make it over into something new. I'm using the same paint that was on the background and it's a color called Parchment and it is a Craft Smart paint from Michaels. I got it on sale, so I grabbed as much as I could. They were five bucks a bottle. I'm going to give this sign a couple of coats, maybe even three, just to make sure that I can cover up all of that print and image. I cut out and designed this tree shape using my laser cutting machine. And this whole craft kit minus the frame will be available on my Etsy shop. So if you're interested, the link is down in my description box. I'm using a little bit of water and then some sage green paint to stain the wood. I don't want a solid color for this because I just like the grain of the wood coming through. So anytime you want to create a stain, all you have to do is just dip your paintbrush in a little bit of water first and then into your paint and you've created a stain. It really opens up a world of possibilities when you can use any color you want. The next part of this kit is the stable and it has a really beautiful North Star cutout and I'm going to just use some light gray paint for this. You can use any paint color you want again to make the stain. I just decided to go with some gray. And finally, for the last piece of this kit is Mary Joseph and Baby Jesus in the Manger. For this one, I am using some antiquing wax, which is just a really nice shade of brown. Again, I am watering it down a little bit, so it's not quite so dark. Now that everything is dry, I'll be able to put them together. I'm just going to use hot glue. That's plenty good enough for these pieces. They're very light in weight. The stable will go on top and I'm just going to center it and then I'll add Mary Joseph and baby Jesus. I love how simple and beautiful these craft kits turn out. They're so easy to work with. The final step is to simply glue the tree right onto the middle of the frame and this project is done. I love the simplicity of it. It's very rustic and natural and I think it's perfect. For this project, I'm using three of these Dollar Tree Christmas trees, and I'm going to glue them all together to make a chunky tree. So I'm using some of my Gorilla Wood Glue, and I've got some clamps at the ready because I'm going to need to clamp all of these corners together to make sure that it turns out nice and flat. I think this is a great idea for those of you who don't own or are not comfortable using a jigsaw or a table saw or any of those big power tools with chunky wood. For a fraction of the price, because you're not investing in huge machinery, you could definitely get the look of chunky wood with these. I think using even five or six of them would look even better, but all I had was three and of course it's July, so the Dollar Tree doesn't have any of their Christmas out yet. One thing to make sure of when you're using the clamps is to make sure that your boards don't move. Sometimes they can shift a little bit and make sure you grab a rag and wipe off any of the excess wood glue when you're done. Then you'll need to set it aside for about half an hour to dry. Now that it's dry, I'm going to use some wood filler just to fill up the hole on the front and the back. My idea for this is to turn it into a serving tray. So I'm taking three of these little spindle feet. These are actually wood turned egg cups. They're supposed to be for wooden eggs that sit in, but I really love to use them for feet. And I do have these available on my Etsy shop in sets of four. So if you're interested in getting some of these, I've got lots in stock. 
Since it's raw wood to raw wood, my hot glue will work perfectly. I totally forgot to turn my camera on when I was staining this. I just used the antiquing stain and I used a little bit of water again and a sponge to apply it. Now what I'm doing is taking more of the antiquing wax in a really small stiff brush and I'm going to just do a really dark edge all the way around it. And what this does is help to camouflage that there's actually three boards there instead of one. I'm definitely going to be on the lookout for more of these wood pieces from the Dollar Tree. I think they're going to be beautiful pieces to work with, especially when you make them super chunky so they can stand on their own. This project is what got me into the Christmas spirit. I love how it turned out and I think it's my favorite out of all five today. I'm going to cover it with some semi-gloss. This is just a piece of old wood that came from one of our buildings at our cottage. It was already painted green. Now I'm just going to go ahead and use some of this candle wax and just go around the edges where I want the paint not to adhere. So I'm going to be covering it with some white paint and then I'll be able to remove the white paint very easily wherever the wax was. I sealed the green in with some clear spray. It was a semi-gloss, a little bit shiny, but you won't notice that once I have this completely painted white. I'm using my DIY chalk paint and I'm going to do two coats. What I like to do sometimes is use my hair dryer or you can use a heat gun and I've got this on the hot setting. I want to dry this really quick because what happens is you get a little bit of crackling naturally when you really use high heat on any type of paint. So I'm going to get a little bit of a crackle effect and then I'm also going to see some green coming through when I remove that paint. Now that the paint is completely dry, I can use any type of scraper and just pull off the paint where the wax was. I had it really heavy around the edges because I wanted a lot of that green to show through. And I did a little bit on that groove there and a little bit more on the inside of the project. I printed off these two images using some tissue paper and my inkjet printer. And if you're curious to know how to do that, I have a tutorial linked down in my description box, which will show you step by step how to do it. I love this cardinal. I think this is what made me get into the Christmas spirit. And I found this printable on Creative Fabrica. And I will have a link for that down in my description box. This particular graphic comes with six different images. And unfortunately, I can't give this to you as a free printable because I had to pay for it myself as well. But it's well worth it. Take a look at the Creative Fabrica site and see if there's anything that you like. Once the image is down, I like to take my brush and a little bit more Mod Podge making sure that it's nice and wet every time. And I just kind of brush along a little bit the outside. And sometimes I will even pounce a little bit up and down with my brush to get out any of the wrinkles around the edge and make sure that it's really adhered well. To spruce this up a little bit more, I added some of this greenery, some ribbon, some pine cones, and I think this turned out really pretty. You'll have to let me know what you think of this one. For this next project, I'm using this chunky wooden tag, which is cut out from a deck board, and I'm going to just give it a couple of good coats of white chalk paint. 
I'm doing another tissue paper printable, and this one will be available on my website. That link is also in my description box. It is a Highland cow for Christmas, and I thought it was super cute. It is also from Creative Fabrica, so if you want to get lots more of these, you'll have to go to their site and check out what they have. Because I altered this and added the Merry Christmas and the circle garland around it, I'm able to offer it to you simply because it's not just the same image. I'm using some of this wired jute that I think I got at Dollar Tree. I'm not really sure. And these sort of oval shaped or egg shaped kind of beads. I'm going to use four of them and make a beaded hanger for the sign. Next, I figured out where I wanted the wire to attach to the tag, and I'm going to use some small little cup hooks. I'm just going to screw them in by hand. They're really easy to get in there. This is an old piece of deck board, so it has some weather to it already. And I'm going to just leave the cup hook open like this until I get the beaded hanger put on. I've got both cup hooks put on and now I'm just going to bend the wire at the end of each of the beads and just make a loop and that I'll be able to then hook onto the cup hooks. Now that the wire is on the cup hooks, I can take my pliers and I can just squeeze the cup hook together and that will create an eye hook and make sure that the hanger doesn't fall off. One of my favorite types of greenery to use for Christmas is boxwood. So I've got these little boxwood picks and I took off some of the pip berries, the little red ones, and I'm going to just glue them onto the end. And I think that's gonna make a really sweet little Christmas pick. Then I'll add them onto the top of the tag with a few pine cones and some other little fillers. And this project is done. This last project is super simple. It doesn't take much to just freshen up something that you find at the thrift store. I've got two of these reindeer stocking holders. They were a dollar each. They're gold, not my style, so I'm going to spray paint them black. Thank you so much for spending some of your time with me today. I really appreciate each and every one of you. If you enjoyed these Christmas decor ideas, I'd love it if you could give me a thumbs up, hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on anything else I have to share, and of course, hit the subscribe button. If you're looking for even more Christmas inspiration, here's my Christmas playlist. Bye for now.